Previously on Techie 101 Bleach Reviews. Okay, how you doing? <sighs> Greetings, manga reviewer. I am Yuha Bach, the Kaiser of the Quincy Empire. Well, looks like chapter 600's gonna be pretty interesting after all. <laughs> oh, f my life. Hmm. This book is absolutely inflammatory. Mm. Hey, you you want any candy pumpkins? And what the hell would that be? Eh, it's kind of like candy corn, except in pumpkin form. No, I... I don't eat food that rhymes. You had a very sad childhood, didn't you? Uh, have you read Chapter 565? You know, being a miracle baby wasn't all it's cracked up to be, you know. I was actually very neglected. Eh, well, to each his own, I guess. Oh, um, Chapter 600 was just released. Ah, jolly good then! Tekken 101, you will now feel the wrath of my Quincy might! Come on, dude, are we still gonna do this? I mean, you've been hanging out at my house for the past week. I mean, we've had some pretty good times together. I mean, I don't think we have to go back to this. No! I will not forgive your sins! Although I will admit the corn maze was a lot of fun. You got lost in five minutes, burned it down, and killed five kids in the process. I would not consider that a fun Friday night. Well, forget about it! Let's pick up where we left off last week. The epic final showdown between the two of us that will rock this world to its core! I am going to do your bleach review! That is take a shot, you the Oh, really? You just want to do a... Oh, shit, okay, well, if that's the case, then, uh, that's awesome. Less, you know, stuff I have to do. I'll, uh, just stay back here and update the monuments, and, uh, ooh, by the way, I have to forgot something. You know, I actually kind of like this setup, you know, everything's going on back here. I got my epic sexy image going on. I think I can make this work. I wonder if the other reviewers will like me. Oh, how about that Lunar Spiral girl? Yes, I think I should give her a call to see what she thinks of my new exploits. Bro, she's not into you. Ha 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 ha. What the hell would that be? Oh, you're a little bit new to the party. I wouldn't expect you to understand. But it's Bleach Chapter 600, man. That means... Cake! All right, do I hit the space bar? Oh, okay, we're on. Well, that was, uh, that was a very intense intro there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And in case you're curious about where the fan animations in that intro came from, they are the work of both Reiji and Sham Balian. Reiji did the one uh, that featured Byakuya, as well as Ichigo attaining his news on Getsus, and Sham Balian did the amazing animation on uh, Rukia's Bonkai release. So you can check them out below in the description. Yeah, it's great. Are you done doing your thing? Because this is my show now. Greetings, everyone. Yuha Bach here to review Bleach chapter number 600, entitled Snipe. Now we continue mm. with... Now I get to tell you something interesting, actually. So the title of chapter 600 is Snipe. Now, way back in the development stages before Kubo actually understood what he was going to do with the series, instead of the Shinigami using uh, swords, as they do now, they were originally going to use guns, which might explain why Kubo has such a massive gun fetish in the final arc. Maybe he was trying to do all the shit he wanted to do when he began in like his uh, notes before he started the series, but he transferred it over to the Quincy's instead. I don't know. But anyway, the original title of that series before it was Bleach was in fact Snipe. So this is a little callback to 13 years ago when he was first coming up with the series and it's pretty cool it's pretty cool you know i could kill you in like 18 million different ways quite literally right all right whatever anyway the chapter begins with a loyal subject of mine sternwinter x little barrel taking a shot directly toward the zero squad member shutara's head as she falls to the ground in a bloody mess kind of interesting that that much blood was crammed in that tight little body of hers but you know whatever a shinigami magic super i don't know 
Anyway, Harold Valkyrie, Sternritter M, then chastises Lily for his actions as he shot Shutara directly in the path of me, his majesty, to walk through. Although I have to admit, it's not the worst thing I've ever walked to. If you've ever been to San Francisco, you know what, I'll just forget about it. Anyway, so, Lily doesn't exactly acknowledge that he did was wrong, but he does ask for Berndina, Sternritter C, to go assist him. And we still have no idea what's up with that thing. Now, I could tell you, because, you know, I kind of created it, but, you know, that, that would... Now, that's spoilers! That's what the internet does these days, right? Spoilers, yes! So amidst Jutara's lifeless bloody corpse, we then have a... I, an, an onion, I think, pop out of her, and honestly, I have no idea what that thing is. Well, I mean, if you want my opinion on the matter, and really, that's all it could be. It's not like I have an expertise in this series or anything. Okay, well, I think uh, that was Shutara's cloth, making a clone of herself or something. You notice how it kind of gets all scrunched up, as if her hands are literally contorted back into a cloth mound, and it just kind of stays there in a bloody mess. I think that's what they were trying to get across there, that the Shutara and possibly the Karinji that they were fighting the entire time was nothing more than just a clone created by Shutara to accentuate the ruse uh, that we were about to see. Right! Um, I don't agree with you, but I'll go with whatever he said. I guess uh, Sternritter X and M did not notice the blood cloth onion arrived from Shutara. Instead, they state that there's nothing that can stand in their path, as always. Lily Barrel then takes his epic sniper rifle and then points it at the four remaining palaces. Palaces? Palaces? What's the plural of palace? I, I don't know. Figure I should know that, but then again, I only need one palace because I am the god of all none! Okay, you know what? It's been, it's been bled to death. Let's just continue. We get the title page as Lily shoots down all four of them simultaneously. Oh yeah, take that, Shinigami! Suck my bock! <sighs> Alright, uh, anyway, after taking out the four palaces with four well-placed shots... Also, by the way, I have to mention a little thing here. The uh, original translation is X-axis, meaning what he was. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what that indicates. I believe the Japanese kanji for it meant, like, sure kill, sure death. Basically implying that whatever Lele hits with his sniper rifle gets obliterated or killed immediately. How to, Kind of like how Shutara went down with one shot. Even though technically a gunshot shouldn't have had enough force in order to take down all the different palaces, it still did. So that's really what his power indicates. Alright, so right about before your majesty is about to make his glorious entrance, uh, Lily is then distracted when the entire background, including the palaces that he just shot out of the sky, begin to flap upwards as if they're made out of cloth. Very similar to the same way that Shutar faked out Wine Nines or Wines or Sternritter W in the last few chapters, how he thought he took out all the uh, members of Shutar's BDSM squad, but then they appeared behind the pillars. It's the same day basic technique, so we know it's Shutar's handiwork. So he realizes, though, that this is on a much bigger scale. It's not just the background that's changing, but the sky, the ground, basically anything that they're around. So much so that Lily doesn't even understand where they are anymore. We then have Shutara appearing behind them perfectly well and states that this was just a fake Soul Palace that they created to welcome them. And in reality, the real Soul Palace is hidden directly behind Osho. Osho being the Japanese word, I guess, to designate a, uh, a monk, which is why they don't, Ichi doesn't use directly his name, uh, Ichibei. It's more of just a symbol of honor or title. It's a title, really. Yeah, uh, actually, instead of a catty manner, I'm just going to tell you to shut the fuck up, because this is something I actually want to say here. Oh, come on, you're not going to let me explain anything? I mean, clearly he was using a... I mean, obviously, it must have been the... Ah, fuck it, go ahead. Alright, so, Ichibei basically used his ability to hide the Soul Palace behind him, and how he did this was in a very interesting way. He literally made the giant kanji for hidden in the sky, and then we see him with a paintbrush, so we know he did it. Now, I don't think this has anything to do with Ichibei Zanpakuto, whatever it may be. The Soul King himself bestowed Ichibei, which was, I think, the very first member of the Zero Squad. I don't know if that was stated or fan conjecture, but I think it's one of the two. Anyway, he bestowed Ichibei with the ability to name things, so I think that takes a a very literal meaning when it comes to his power. He literally draws, uh, draws giant kanji in the sky, or I guess on I guess it could be on anything. It doesn't have to be in the sky. It could be on a physical object or whatever, and basically whatever he writes will become truth to whatever happens. Uh, sort of like solid script magic in a fairy tale, if you want to go that way with it. It's how Levy can write fire and the fire sketch actually becomes engulfed in flames. Kind of the same thing with Ichibei's power, just on a much more grander scale. So, what he said... Anyway, yes, so uh, Ichibei uses this ability to reveal the Soul Palace as Lily Barrow decides to just take out his sniper rifle and shoot the old man directly in his bald face, but he decides that that's okay because that the prison is ready to go. Right as Lily fires a shot, a giant tree springs up and out pops Kirio Hikefune. Ah, yes, yes, I've made it in time. It's been quite a while since I've had to prepare such an enormous cage. It was an awful amount of work. 
Yeah, that's nice. Can you please turn back into a hot chick now? I would, I would really like to see that again. Well, the way Curio puts it is that ingredients equal life. Life equals plant life, hence the giant cage tree thing she just pulled off. Also, she can create the ingredients inside of her own body, which basically she has the wood release style that Hashirama Senju has from that series. I think it's called not- Jojo, jo, jo, stop, stop, stop. We, we do not mention that series here. It's the Foxy Orange Ninja Delivering Lasting Error Show, or Fondle for short, if you really have to mention it. But aside from that, we're not even going there. All right, whatever, buddy. Uh, I feel like there's some powerful force looming over my head that's stronger than even I, so I don't think I'll mention it. Anyway, Askin and Harold both look around and notice that they're in quite a pickle here as the giant tree encases all of them. I guess that also includes Hashwalt and Uryu, but we don't get to see them in this chapter because Kubo can't draw the extra, you know, couple of characters just to confirm where they are. Whatever! Lele tries to take out the branches, even trying to shoot between the spaces, but as you can imagine, it doesn't go over too well. The branches are insanely durable, and if he tries to shoot in a space in between them, a branch just pops out and blocks his shot. Kirio states that that's because these trees feed on Riatsu, so it's exactly like that tree from the... What the hell did you call it again? The Foxy Orange Ninja... Like, like fuck, it's retarded. That, that series that's ending in five weeks, it's exactly like that. Anyway, though, since Lily's gun's bullets also have Reatsu made out of them, it's a tasty treat that the tree simply cannot resist. He states that there's simply no way they can escape this cage. Of course, all of this is interrupted when the last member of the Zero Squad finally shows up on the scene. Yo! I'm the number one Zabato creator! Oh, Ju, Q, Hachi- Oh, God, please don't tell me he's going to rap! I- 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 I got- I had none of that from Sturmager R the Roar! I do not need another rapping goddamn person in this freaking series! Nana, Roku, Go Meishi, Mani, Sami, Johnny, Maya, Oetsu. I probably butchered that, but I don't care about you. Oh God, now I'm doing this. Ah, please purge my own soul. Sorry, but all roads are closed to small fry. The real battle with the Zero Division officially starts now. And that would be the end of the chapter. Very brief when all things considered, especially since I'm standing up here reviewing the whole thing and actually went by a lot quicker. So, um, I'm actually kind of happy, despite the fact that our plans were foiled, that the attack force of the Zero Squad actually is somewhat competent. No offense, but these past couple chapters, I were honestly thinking they were weaker than your standard fifth seat in their battle strategies and everything, but they actually seem to be doing something very clever. It makes sense to think that they knew about our arrival, as in Hashwal through you and me. I mean, think about it. We have Ichigo, who had the clothes of an Oaken. They knew that the barriers would be crushed. you think they would be expecting this, and they set this whole massive subterfuge up in the meantime. Also, I feel kind of bad for Sternreader W, because he really was completely useless in this entire series. I mean, I think the Stern Raiders that were one-shotted by Kenpachi got more character development than that poor guy did, but, you know, whatever, he was the jester of my court, so, you know, I had to throw him in there somewhere anyway. I didn't exactly get much more exposition in this chapter, especially since it's chapter 600, everyone was expecting Grim Jow Jagger Jack to show back up, but that didn't happen. But, hey, I think the weight from the last chapter kind of carried it. It wasn't as exciting as last chapter, but it certainly still had the same vibe. I would have wanted to learn a little bit more about the Stern Raiders that I summoned last chapter, my elite guard, especially Perndina, Stern Raider C, but hell, maybe we're going to save that for later. And if nothing else, this finally sets up the big battle royale we're going to be having. So, my question to you, loyal viewers, is who do you think is going to face off against who in terms of the Zero Squad and my Elite Guard? And will I just curb stomp through everybody like you know I could and just stomp right into the Stolp King's palace and then just beat his freaking face up? Anyway, yeah, so that's it. Eh, honestly, I think you did a pretty good job. You want to do this again next week, maybe? Your job clearly is something that cannot be done by anyone else, so... Tell you the truth, I, uh, I won't be doing it next week. In fact, I think I'll give you a reward for all the shit you have to put up with for doing this over 140 times. Oh, wait, seriously? Yes, using my mighty power of soul division, I will bestow upon you a single script. You may pick any letter of the alphabet that has already been known in the series, and I will bestow upon you the true power of a oh, stern Oh, that's a fucking jip! Yeah, you heard me. Letter V. Hit me. No, 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 you can't do that! You can't pick the one power that basically gives you all the other powers. That's a freaking cheat, and you know it! That did, I don't want to hear it! You said any letter! Uh, oh, what about Sternritter I? The iron! Yeah, how'd that be cool? You could turn your skin into iron like that kid from Ben 10. Oh, let me think about that here, uh, just for a second. Uh, no! Stick your V in me right now, Bach! Duh, for the love of me! Okay, fine, fine, whatever, it's cool. I, Uha Bach, the Kaiser of the Quincy Empire, hereby imprint the script of V onto you. Tekken 101.
<laughs> now, if you have any semblance of a heart inside of you, you won't do the obvious thing, which is to... I imagine you're on Mars. Oh, fuck you, man! Oh, yes. After three and a half goddamn years of doing this show, I finally have something cool to show for it. You will all bow before my powers, you insolent peons! <laughs> but first, I'm gonna make a Rotom. I love you, Rotom. Oh, you're awesome.